We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. What happens when the marketplace of free ideas and businesses is usurped by subsidies at the hand of the government? Well, this week we saw Amazon, one of the largest uh, companies in the United States, demand more than $150 million from the state of Virginia to move their factory to the Commonwealth. Now, what does that mean for Virginia? What does that mean in terms of subsidies? And is the government picking winners and losers to help us fathom all this? We're joined by economics editor, Mr. Andrew Moran, who uh, hopefully has the right answer for us. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for having me. So, Andrew, give me the, the brief details on the Amazon demand. So this story actually dates back to 2018. There was this huge thing of Amazon wanted to create a second headquarters. And it considered many places, considered New Jersey, considered New York, Virginia, and eventually it chose Virginia. Now, Virginia said, we're going to give you hundreds of millions of dollars if you build your HQ2 in Arlington, Virginia, the northern region of the state, and you create all these jobs. In exchange, you know, we're going to give you all this money. And so now, uh, a few years later, Amazon is now saying, okay, it's time to pay up. They didn't, they, uh, Amazon didn't uh, apply to Virginia for the money because they said, you know, the COVID-19 public health crisis, it weighed on budget. So now, you know, now we want our money. You, you promised us, give us to us. So now they're offering, now they're asking for about $152 million to pay by 2026. Uh, Virginia probably will. I mean, they, they've been running a budget surplus. You know, their, their, their books are good. So they probably will say, okay, yeah, you know, we'll give you the money. The problem is, however, is that they are delaying the construction of phase two of this plan and they've been cutting tens of thousands of jobs this year. So whether or not this will impact Virginia remains to be seen. So I think there are, there are two things at issue here now. Specifically, I, I do want to talk about the the subsidy issue, with, where essent, uh, essentially governments are picking winners and losers in, in ranges of industries. But uh, I, I would just like to briefly address that I, I presume with Virginia offering to pay this money, that's because they believe that through taxation, they'll recoup that and more over a period of time. Is that what they're looking for, return on investment? Well, that's partially, but the main thing is job creation. Uh, the state of Virginia is subsidizing these jobs about 15% of the salaries. They say that, you know, you will give you this money, but you have to create uh, jobs that pay at least $150,000 per worker. So you do the math, Virginia is paying about 14.9%. So it's all, all, for the most part, all these job creation subsidies from states and countries everywhere, it's all about employment payrolls. They're so desperate for the job. Because if they see that, oh, look, this company's adding 200,000 jobs over the next 10 years, that's great on my record when I run for Senate or when I run for, run for president. So that's the main reason. It's all about jobs, jobs, jobs. Okay, but of course the jobs presumably end up paying taxes to the state and federal governments, right? Yeah, but in this day and age, I mean, who cares about tax revenue? You can just issue all these bonds. You can bail us from the federal government. So you can run deficits no matter what. So who cares about tax revenue? This I, I, I guess the question is there, uh, you know, if the government can print free money, why are we paying taxes, right? So <laughs> let, let's talk about subsidy then as, as a broader uh, topic. Now, we, we've seen it time and time again. You have government investing in, well, what I, when I say government, read the taxpayer is investing through the, the largesse of the, uh, the government, uh, or the crime family, however you like to term it. To, um, and so what they're doing is they are buying things like uh, putting money into semiconductor plants, that they're looking at uh, electric cars, they're giving a lot of stuff to electric cars. Not Elon Musk for some reason, who, as he's one of the big pioneers, that strikes me as strange. But uh, essentially what they're doing is they're using taxpayer money to fund industries that I agree will likely have uh, a net benefit for the, the average consumer. But they're picking a company uh, to the detriment of other companies in that field. And isn't that just killing competition? Yes, I will get into that. But first, I'd like to mention about Elon Musk and Tesla. Now, I love Elon Musk. He's a great guy. I love what he's doing and everything. But Tesla has benefited enormously oh, from yeah. government subsidies. and, and Yeah, not under this administration, though. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, well, yeah. If you look yeah. at the, the the EV tax credits, it seems like Tesla has been uh, omitted from that list. So, mm. but overall, over the years, Tesla got to where it was because it received a lot of billions of dollars of taxpayer money. Now, when it comes to picking winners and losers and choosing certain industries, you're correct. If you remember a few years ago, uh, Wisconsin under Governor Scott Walker, they said we're going to give Foxconn. Foxconn is a Taiwanese electronics uh, factory, and they said we're going to give you 4.1 billion dollars to establish a new factory. That was one of the biggest boondoggles and mm. showing why subsidies don't work. You know, the factory was never built, and they said that they're they're going to create thirteen thousand new jobs, which would have cost about three hundred forty thousand dollars of taxpayer money per job. When it comes to green energy, that's that has a more than a decade long uh, history of failure. Getting back to the Obama administration, Solyndra failed. Uh, there was a company called Abagoa, I think it was. Uh, the Obama administration gave it four billion dollars. What happened? Company failed, had seventeen billion dollars in debt. So, and also another another factor worth pointing Sorry, out. Just, is that- just- to interrupt you there, Andrew, yes. presumably, sure. yes. obviously, the taxpayers got back their $4 billion, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's not going to happen. I mean, also, take two, look at look at this way. Look at this way. Green energy, everyone talks mm. about, everyone bashes oil, saying, oh, why, why, aren't, why, isn't oil, why aren't energy prices lower than they are? You know, why aren't oil companies doing their part? Why aren't they getting all this money you're giving them? What about green energy? You're, you're, you, and what was it? Before the pandemic, the government, the U.S. government spent about, what, was it uh, $80 billion a year on green companies? And all this time, what has wind been doing for the consumer? What has solar been doing for the consumer? Absolutely. Absolutely nothing at all. So it's, it has been a complete waste of money. And also, as I, I wanted to mention before, is that a lot of corporations pretty much survive now on government subsidies. I, I think they're there are quasi zombie companies. Boeing is a great example. Boeing has just it needs constant bailouts, needs constant rebates and tax credits because it uh, employs a lot of people, of course. But that company would probably fold in theory anyway if it didn't have any uh, taxpayer taxpayer funds. You know, I'm reminded of the the idea of uh, too big to fail with the banks. So with with the banks, what you you've seen is uh, obviously before with the bailouts that uh, so they wouldn't go under. The the government used taxpayer money to essentially just give them a load of cash. Um, but isn't this essentially the same thing with these companies to protect the jobs that the the companies created before? They're just essentially funding them a bailout year in year out. And how does that impact the rest of the industry? So, for example, you say Boeing is getting the rebates and the handouts. And I get it, right? Somebody wants to protect the workers' jobs. But what about the workers at the other airlines? That I know, I know that most airlines do get some kind of uh, bailout money. Um, but if we take this industry-wide, or for all different industries, what about the companies that don't get it? That aren't they going to be shut down? What about those workers, the ones who can't compete against a company that has unlimited free money courtesy of uh, the White House? Yeah, I think you you alluded to this earlier the segment where the government's essentially picking winners and losers, it's choosing mm. out which companies can get all this taxpayer money and which corporations cannot. And then it leads into a broader conversation about moral hazards. I mean, if uh, you're at this point, let's say let's use Boeing as another example, that company is terribly managed. At this point, you're just subsidizing incompetence because if Boeing cannot have better management skills or they can't have better executives, then that company would fail without government intervention whatsoever. Whatsoever. So every industry depends on it. But at the same time, I mean, corporation uh, so subsidies, if you look at a variety of studies that show this, subsidies essentially do not work because all they're doing is that, yes, the company will be established, a company will be picking certain locations of the country, but it doesn't provide pretty much net benefit to anything. It just, it's, it's, it's a sunk cost for all of taxpayers. And all you're doing is just, you know, why, why might as well have the government just set up, set up these, these state owned enterprises by itself and just funded it by itself, as opposed to giving out all these handouts, you know, uh, Disney is another great example. Disney, has for decades relied on taxpayers and government privileges just to survive. It would it survive by itself without all these privileges? That means to be seen. There's no uh, case to look at it because it just gets all this money from the state. Well, I mean, I, I think soon enough we will find out the answer to that particular question. 
Yeah, well, yeah, well, this, okay, this is this is such an interesting subject. I, I, I think I'm going to write on it soon. Whereby, you know, uh, with Ron DeSantis, what he's doing by removing these special privileges, you know, a lot of libertarians and conservatives will bash him by saying, "Oh, you're targeting business because of political reasons," and then Democrats will say, "Oh, what about private co- private corporations?" And we love capitalists and all that stuff. But overall, Disney has uh, has been given these special special privileges since the 1970s. What other company in Florida or any other state for that matter has rece- has been afforded these privileges for all these years no local government intervention no concern about zoning laws tax exempt bonds Disney can pretty much do whatever it wants on this land. If every company was afforded that same opportunity, I would be completely in favor of it. But it does not. So you know, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily you know, cry into my soup if uh, Ron DeSantis is removing these uh, special privileges to a private corporation. And the subsidy arms race continues. Andrew Moran, thanks ever so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa K. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggot of authors. Friendly. Deconstructing the leftist narratives. Debating the hot, hot topics. topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five.